No Ordinary Pop Show, the 1967 Stax Vault UK Tour. From the moment that Booker T and the MGS strode onto the stage of Fairfield Hall on Easter Monday, it was obvious that the Otis Redding show was going to be a rip-roaring success. The audience were shouting and stamping their feet right from the start, but this wasn't an ordinary pop show, not the usual crowd of 12-year-old girls screaming over their particular idol, this was an audience who knew what to expect and wanted to hear at least some of what went on. And, excited though they undoubtedly were, they caused no real trouble. They rushed the stage a couple of times but soon returned to their seats when told to. The accent was on beat, and this was laid down loud and fast throughout. Booker T and the MGS kicked off proceedings and it was soon clear that the reputation they had brought with them from the States was justified. We sat and marveled at Steve Cropper's magnificent guitar work and Booker T's brilliant organ playing as they rocked through numbers like Green Onions and Summertime. This group were on stage throughout, providing the backing for all the other acts and they were soon joined by the Marquis, who added body to the backing with two saxophones and a trumpet. In their own spot, the Marquis played Philly Dog and Last Night and sounded very much like their records. But when at last a vocalist appeared, the fragile-looking Arthur Conley, it became obvious that the backing was just a little too loud. His voice was almost drowned. Nevertheless he gave an exciting performance of a couple of Wilson Paquette numbers, Midnight Hour and 634-5789, and he really got the crowd going with his new record, Sweet Soul Music. Closing the first half was Eddie Floyd, who jumped around the stage as though he had a wasp in his trousers. His numbers included If I Had a Hammer and his biggest hit Knock on Wood. An impressive performance and an exciting one. So far there hadn't been a weak act on the bill and most of the audience were tired out from shouting, clapping and stamping. But could this last? It didn't take long after the interval to find out. Sam and Dave ran onto the stage and almost immediately the audience was on its feet applauding. The program described their act as double dynamite and it wasn't a bad description at that. They danced, they jumped and, for once, we could hear what they were singing about. They stole the show. Their act was polished and professional and they generated so much excitement that I thought the roof might cave in at any moment. They finished their act with a 10-minute version of Hold On I'm Coming and when they eventually left, the crowd was yelling for more. It looked like a difficult moment for the show's compare. Emperor Roscoe, of Radio Caroline, but he was unperturbed and he managed to get the crowd yelling not for Sam and Dave but for Otis Redding, the star of the show. And suddenly there was Otis doing his jigging routine on numbers like Mr. Pitiful, Satisfaction and Shake. I could hear little because of the noise from the backing group and from the crowd, and personally I found the numbers rather tuneless. It wasn't until he sang a couple of slow numbers, My Girl and I've Been Loving You Too Long, that I became really enthusiastic. On these, particularly the latter, he was brilliant. If anyone did not know before, they certainly knew then what soul music is all about. The climax of his act was Try a Little Tenderness, which started very slowly but became wilder and wilder. His 15-minute version of the song went down well with the audience, but I thought the seven or eight carefully planned encores were a bit corny. This was surely the most exciting show that the Fairfield Hall had seen in a long, long time.